So what is pulsed light and how does it give a biological advantage over non-pulsed? Up until this point, all discussion has been on non-pulsed light. Pulsed light is simply the turning on and off of the light at very specific intervals. Multiple studies have confirmed that pulsed wave has positive effects on cells above that of continuous or non-pulsed wave. What is it? Again, it's the turning on and off of light, but at a very controlled frequency and duration. By frequency, we mean how frequent does the light turn on and off per second. This can generally range from 1 to 10,000. Duration, meaning when the light flashes on, how long does it last, which can be from half a second before it turns off up to billions of a second. Continuous wave or non-pulsed is simply when the light is always on, just like your at-home light bulb. Although researchers haven't exactly figured out why pulsed light is rendering greater benefits, they have a few pretty strong theories. One, fundamental frequency exists within us as all cells vibrate at a range of tens to thousands of vibrational pulses per second. The pulsing of light wavelengths thus creates a resonance with the cells and brings them to a healthier state of vibration. Second is that pulsing creates greater nitric oxide disassociation or release. As we discussed earlier about nitric oxide blocking the mitochondria's ability to produce ATP, the thought is that nitric oxide once knocked off the mitochondria would quickly reattach and thus further block production. But the constant pulsing of the light would continue to knock the nitric oxide off whenever it attempted to reattach. The longer the nitric oxide is separated from the mitochondria, the more ATP can be produced and used by the body. And third, that pulsing changes the viscosity of the water sheath surrounding the cells and mitochondria, making them more permeable and allowing greater transfer of particles through the ion channels. These channels carry microscopic nutrients such as potassium and calcium. These vital nutrients, in turn, feeds the mitochondria to produce more ATP. It's certainly possible that all three of these theories are occurring at the same time. I don't want to get too in the weeds with pulsing, but just to give an example with brain health. What we know is that as mammals, our brains have their own unique frequency that are detectable with the right equipment known as an EEG machine. When directing specific wavelengths of light and specific frequencies, the researchers can see in real time changes that are occurring deep in the brain. This is very exciting for the future as more and more studies are showing positive results for Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, as well as other brain issues such as TBI, PTSD, and depression. I'll let you pause here if you wish to read this more in depth, but this is just one of many fascinating studies showing significant and long-lasting effects immediately after a 20-minute session of 810 nanometer, which is near-infrared, pulsed at 40 hertz, meaning 40 times per second. The conclusion is, the changes in this study were significant and occurred immediately after 20 minutes of active photobiomodulation stimulation. Another study done on rabbits and rats showed significant improvement following an induced stroke. In comparing pulsed and non-pulsed, the pulsed group showed greater improvement. Important to note that both light groups, pulsed and non-pulsed, showed improvement. So what devices pulse? Many pad systems pulse. Typically, they have 3 to 10 presets between 10 and 5,000 hertz or pulses per second. Helmets or headgear for brain health will typically pulse at 10, 40, or both. Torches typically pulse at 5 to 10 hertz. Only a couple panels at this point are pulsing. But I would certainly bet that within a few years, it will be the majority of devices that pulse. So let's dig a little bit more into the pulsing. As I stated earlier, many devices have presets to choose from. 
Others might allow you to choose any pulse setting within a certain range, say from 1 to 10,000 Hertz. Many will have the option to do pulsing and non-pulsing. Commonly found in helmets and headgear will be 10 and 40 Hertz. In pad systems and some panels, you can find 10 and 40, as well as groupings of frequencies known as Nogier or Solfeggio frequencies. These may be a single frequency or a group of 4 to 12 frequencies to choose from. Each frequency is meant for a general type of ailment such as inflammation or depression. Dr. Paul Nogier, who created the Nogier frequencies, was a French neurologist and the founder of auricular therapy. He found specific pulse frequencies elevated healing in specific cell types. He believed the seven specific frequencies are preferentially recognized by the body, so they enter into resonance to exert effects on the body. This was in 1970, way before scientists theorized that the increased benefit of pulsing could be due to resonance. Noget consists of seven frequencies. You may see these frequencies have a range of a few higher or lower. 73 hertz or 73 pulses per second is for use when cellular activity is hypoactive, such as chronic recurring problems, poor healing fractures, chronic splints, and for stimulation of osteoid, which is an unmineralized tissue that calcifies. 147 is a universal setting for inflammation. So use this when you have swelling, pain, arthritis, etc. 292 is for tissue of ectodermal origin, meaning the outside, such as body openings, skin, superficial nerves, wounds, eye injuries. 587 is endoderm tissue, meaning the inside, ideal for circulatory and lymphatic stimulation, as well as organs. This can be used if lymph flow is sluggish, healing process is slow, there's a stagnation of blood or lymph. 1,168 is mesodermal tissue, meaning the middle. This is connective tissue, such as bone, ligament, viscera, tendons, and muscles. 2,336 is for chronic issues, and lastly, 4,698 is for pain control of nerve fibers. This frequency helps to calm nerves by blocking the pain signal. Many of these frequencies have a lot of crossover. 73 hertz could be used for chronic issues, as could 2,336 hertz. Point being, there's no bad pulse option, just some have shown to work better than others. And as every body is different, response may also be different. You may even choose to do a particular setting on day one and another complementary setting on day two and continue to alternate. Solfeggio frequencies refer originally to specific tones of sound that help with and promote various aspects of body and mind health. These frequencies are reputed to date back to ancient history and said to be the fundamental sounds used in both Western Christianity and Eastern Indian religions, chanted by the Gregorian monks and in ancient Indian Sanskrit chants. These frequencies were believed to profoundly affect the conscious and subconscious mind in order to stimulate healing and promote vitality. Over the past few decades, these frequencies have been adopted to use in light and can be found in some pad systems. To hear the solfeggio tones, simply pull them up on YouTube or even ask Alexa to play solfeggio frequency 528. These can be very calming and I recommend using them to help you relax. Use with breathing exercises and meditation, particularly when you're in front of your light. There are six main solfeggio frequencies, although there may be discussion on which should be considered the primary and which should be considered the secondary. 396 hertz or 396 pulses per second is to release fear and guilt. 417 to release negativity and past trauma. 528 for clarity, peace, and healing. 
639 hertz for healing interpersonal relationships, 741 for problem solving and improving emotional stability, and lastly, 852 to create harmony with the universe and oneself. Again, many of these frequencies can be beneficial, so don't worry as there's no wrong one to choose. There are other groupings of frequencies that may be used with light therapy, but we don't need to go through all of them as you get the general idea. It is important to note that studies on these frequencies are very limited. Because there are so many variables when studying light, particularly pulse light, researchers tend to pick obvious numbers. They do this to see one, if there's a measurable difference between pulsed and non-pulsed, and two, if there's a difference between a low pulse like 5 hertz and a higher pulse like 100 hertz. In time, as researchers use newer, more reliable measurement tools, we'll see more studies on these specific frequencies. But like much research, it begins with anecdotal evidence. This is what's currently occurring with these frequencies in wellness centers and home use devices. In summary, pulse light is the on and off of light at specific frequencies and duration. New studies are demonstrating that pulse light has greater benefit over non-pulsed. It's likely that pulsing would become the norm for photobiomodulation. But we still need more research, larger study groups, and consistent measuring techniques.